Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to check the self-test of Unit 4, if you are in MAVO 2. Um, we're going to look at all the right answers, and also I'm going to shortly explain something about those answers um, as we go through them, okay? So I'm going to check it from A to D, because the last two exercises are vocabulary, and you can just check those with the answer sheets that I've sent you via Magister. Um, this is just to look at the grammar exercises of Unit 4, and to explain those pieces of grammar real short, okay? So you've made the, uh, you've done the, the self-test and let's start with exercise uh, A, which in your book can be found on page, on page, here we go, on page 111, okay? If you go to page 111, um, there you have exercise A about the present simple. Looks like this. Hi. Looks like this. So the first sentence, uh, I'm going to fill in the present simple. You talk too much, young man. Um, after you, there does not have to be an extra S because it's not he, she, it. So just you talk. The second one, the singing coach always selects the soloists. The singing coach is a he or a she. So um, you add an S to the present simple. The third one, the singers want to do a blind audition. It is plural, mirvat, singers, and that's why you don't add an extra S, okay? Because you only do that when it's singular, enkelvat. Uh, four, a uh, cat looks like a cat with her green eyes. Cat is a woman, a girl, uh, so you add for she an S to uh, looks like. Five is a question, so that's interesting. Uh, does everybody hide behind a curtain? Everybody is seen as one thing here. So um, it's a he, she, it, basically. And for questions in the present simple, uh, with he, she, it, you add does. Okay? The S of the present simple for he, she, it is already in the word does. So it's not does everybody hide. It's does everybody hide. Okay? That's five questions in the present simple. Six, do you realize that you are the best? For you, we don't add an S, so we don't say does, but do, do you realize? Seven, um, I don't hate that pretty girl. I like her. It's a negation a, when you're being negative, and because of that, you say don't, okay? I don't hate that pretty girl. Eight, that's a negation again. It's also negative. Uh, Donny doesn't send emails. He always sends a text. It's a he, then it's a negation, it's negative. So you don't say um, sends or whatever, you say doesn't send. It's doesn't instead of don't because it's a he. For he, she, it, you say doesn't. For all the rest, for I and you and Mirvat, you say don't. Okay? Uh, this was exercise A about the present simple. If you think the present simple is difficult or you didn't understand this completely, then you should go to page 136 of your textbook and read 4.1 present simple, okay? If this is difficult and you made some mistakes, then go into your book and go to page 160, uh, 36, sorry, 136. Okay, let's uh, speed it up a little bit and go to exercise B. Exercise B looks like this. It was filling in the ink form. Uh, the ink form we use to just talk about verbs, to talk about react word. Okay, you often put the ink form after such words like love or like or um, um, think, etc. Um, when you talk about the verb, basically. Um, I think you can stop worrying about your homework. Here it is. Okay, so that's a uh, that's a way to put the ink form there. Worry ink. Cat loves looking like a star of a musical. You just add ing ing after the verb when we talk about the ing form. Her sister started bullying uh, her when she was 12. Uh, just put ing after bully. B U L L Y I N G. Okay? You just put ing right behind it. You have to uh, you have to stop making phone calls in class. Um to make making here, uh, we take the E off the word make and we add uh, ing. 
We do that because in English we don't like the korte ei situatie. So because of that, we take the e off and we just add uh, ing that way. So you spell it m a k i n g. Okay. The same thing happens with live. Do you like living in a tiny cottage? We don't like a korte ei situatie, so you just add ing after live. L i v i n g. Okay. Six, lastly, we hate doing all that extra work. You take do, you just put ing after it. Only when it becomes a quarter I see to add C do we not like it and we take a letter off to avoid it, okay? Um, moving on. <clears throat> oh, if you, felt, if you thought this was difficult, then you should go to page 136 as well and read 4.2, okay? Take a look at that page and hopefully you'll understand after. If you still don't understand, uh, then you should send me a message, okay? <clears throat> uh, exercise C. Exercise C looks like this. You have to choose between will, shall, or won't. You can always use will or shan't, or sorry, shall, uh, except when it's questions for I or we. Okay? Uh, that's the rule. When it's I or we, um, you have to use shall in questions. Okay? If it's a negation, if it's negative, then we say won't. Okay? Applying that rule, let's take a look at how you did exercise C. Um, the star of the show uh, will decide who is going to sing with her today. But you can also say shall decide who is going to sing with her today. Okay, It's shall or will. Uh, other kinds of sentences you can just choose. Questions with I and we, then you can only use shall. Okay, The second one, um, they will meet or shall meet in secret after school. Both fine, it's not a question, so you can choose. The third one is a question, so let's take a look. Uh, I see a question, I see the word we, and the rule is for questions with I or we, um, you've got to use uh, shall. So three becomes shall we ask Justin to sing for us, okay? Will uh, would be wrong. Real would be wrong here, okay? Uh, let's take a look at four. Uh, it's about she. That's not I or we. I see a question though, but it's not about I or we. So we can still just choose. Um, shall uh, she be at school today or will she be at school today? Either one is fine, okay? Uh, five is a negation, it's negative. So that should be, I won't go to that city musical. I hate musicals, okay? Six, it's also negative. So we won't uh, tell her who is behind that curtain okay so if you thought that was difficult if you didn't quite understand it um take a look at the previous grammar video that's one thing or go to page 136 and read 4.3 in your textbook okay read through that slowly and uh, check the exercises you've already made for homework um with the answer sheet i've given you and see if that way you can um understand it better and practice it more if you need to, okay? It's up to you. I'm here to help, but you need to do what you need to do, okay? Um, we move on from C to the one but last one, D. Um, you have to choose between who or which. Um, we, we call those betrekkelijke voornaamwoorden, and we use these personal pronouns, we call them in English, um, to give extra information, basically. Um, we use the word who when you're giving extra information about a person and which when you're giving extra information about a thing, about an object. Okay, so who for people, for persons, and which for objects or things. Let's take a look at whether we should fill in who or which. Okay, the first one. And that was the song which we were all waiting for. You're giving extra information about a song. A song is a thing. So that's why you say which. Okay. <clears throat> is he the teacher who is always so cruel to you? It's about a person, it's a teacher. So you have to say who and not which. It's is he the teacher who is always so cruel to you? Uh, the third one, it wasn't Donnie who got the main part. You're getting exclamation about Donnie, he's a person, so who? She sent me a reply which said that she was late. Well, this is about a reply, an antwoord. And that's a thing. So that's why you should say which and not who. 
because you're giving extra information about reply and not about she. So who, oh, sorry, which, okay? Because it's about an object. So for is she sent me a reply, which said that she was late. Um, five, she was somebody uh, who always looked confident. Um, it's about a someone, it's about a person. So again, who, okay? Six, the last one, can you hum a tune, uh, which comes from the musical? It's about a tune and, and don't you? And that's a thing. And that's why we say which, and not who, okay? If you thought that was difficult, go to page 137, uh, read 4.4. And I think that that will make it a lot clearer, okay? Uh, you can also go through your homework and see uh, other exercises that tackle uh, betrekkelijke voornaamwoorden. And if you check those with the answer sheet, you can very quickly see how you do, okay? I've got one uh, piece of the self-test left. That was exercise E, um, about adverbs or bijwoorden. These are words that uh, basically tell you how something happens, okay? Um, they are words like always, uh, never, usually, or just. Those are by word, okay? On the test, you will need to know where to put these words in an English sentence, okay? Just like here, I will give you two options. Are you going to put it here or here? And there's rules for, when, for where to put the by word in a sentence, okay? The rule is this. For a verb word, but after a form of to be. So if you see a form of to be, you take... Uh, the by word and you put it after the form of to be okay let's take a look at exercise e and see what that looks like that girl dot 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 visit dot 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 cousins now we've got the word the by word never um because it is um not a form of to be in here we say that girl never visits her cousins the second one the battle axe uh, always comes in with an angry face uh, it's not a form of to be, so we put it at spot A, before comes. Three, she sometimes looks very confident. It's not a form of to be, so we put it before the verb, so at position A, okay? Four, Donny and Cat are just good friends. R is a form of to be, so we put it after R, so at point B. Our younger brother uh, is usually home early, after school there's a form of to be there so we put the by word at position b after the form of to be and six uh, do you often miss drama classes it's not a form of to be so you put it before it at position a okay um that could have been quite difficult maybe so if you didn't understand by word and you made some mistakes there then go to page 137 of unit four in your textbook and read grammar 4.5 to see if you understand it after reading it some more okay and again go back into the homework you've already made and see how you did in those previous exercises check out the answer sheet and see how you do if you made mistakes here or you didn't get it then it's up to you to use the resources to repair that okay i'm just a tool and i'm just going to help you do that but it's up to you as well so check out your homework Check out page 137 if you made some mistakes and go ahead and see if you can uh, help yourself understand it, okay? Now, that was everything minus the vocabulary exercises of unit four, uh, the self-test. I hope you did okay. And that means that you've tackled and really got under control the grammar and everything of unit four. And then after the May holiday about, we can move on to unit five. Um, hope you're all doing okay. Um, and again, if you have any questions, send it question to your teacher, uh, ask your fellow students as well, but also go into the book yourself, seek out the answers there and just read stuff very carefully. Check out the right answers, see how you did. Maybe you even did a little better than you thought you did, okay? Now, I hope you all do well and all the best of luck in the world, okay?